guys, it's Aoife from Words of Clover and I'm here to do a tag video today. So I saw Charlotte over at Coiny Reads do the There Are 10 But book tag and I really, really enjoyed the questions. I am basically tagging myself and uh, here is that video. So I will leave uh, Charlotte's video as well as the original creator's video down below for you guys to check out and I will get straight on into the tag. So the first prompt is, there are 10, but they're over 500 pages long. And for me, this is going to be Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier. This is one of my favourite books that I've read over the past couple of years, and I just enjoyed it so much. It is a slow fantasy book set in ancient Ireland where we are following a character called Sorka who is cursed by her evil stepmother alongside her brothers. Her brothers are turned into swans but Sorka is basically threatened with this curse of silence. And she has to undergo this really 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 hard task to eventually be able to change her brothers back into um, humans before they basically become animals forever. So as readers we follow Sorka as she has to go through this really really arduous task that takes her like a long number of years to do um, and she's very much alone for a lot of it and she you know she can't speak the task that she's doing is actually very very painful so she can't even like utter any words in pain and it's all true she's doing it obviously all through the love of her brothers and um, she wants to be able to save them this is a very emotional book. Sorka goes through a lot in this book, um, both just because of her, her curse and her task that she has to do, but also some things that people do to her as well. And we see Sorka grow up um, and we just become, like, as a, as a reader, I became really, really attached to her. I became really invested um, in her story and in her task and wanting her to do well, wanting her to succeed. Um, and to be honest, even though this was over 500 pages, it didn't, like, I would have read another 500 pages. I would have just kept reading the story forever because the writing, the magic, the, the fantastic, elements in this book, the nature, um, the mythology as well, the mythology elements in it, I really really enjoyed and I just love this book so much. I I like smiled, I cried, um, I swooned while reading it, I loved it so much and I would highly recommend it. The next prompt is there are 10 but they're on pre-order so I actually don't order a lot of like of, of books. I know I probably should um, but there's very few that I do actually pre-order mostly because I think I'm afraid of forgetting what books I've pre-ordered and then maybe buying another copy of them. A lot of books I, I think I just like the weight of waiting for them to come out in the bookshop and then buying them and um, I really like that kind of yeah, I really love like going to a bookshop and picking up a book. And I'm kind of the same with magazines in terms of magazine subscriptions. I love going to a shop and seeing a magazine on a shelf. There's just something really nice about it that I like. But there is actually a book coming out in October that I do have pre-ordered. And it is called Web of Lies by Aoife Gallagher. Um, Aoife Gallagher is actually, she is an ex-colleague of mine. I used to work with her a few years ago. And this is a non-fiction book that uh, it looks at kind of the dark web. Um, and basically the ongoing situation that is around kind of misinformation, disinformation, you know, the, those like anonymous um, dark web forums such as uh, 4chan and QAnon and all these kind of different things. And um, Eva's basically kind of like really examining that in depth into her in her book. And I obviously pre-ordered it because I wanted to support her. So um, I am really excited for that to come out because I actually think it will be a really, really good read as well and really, really interesting. And really topical and also a really important read as well. So I, I, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it coming out um, and sinking, sinking my feet into it. Prompt three is there are 10, but they're a red flag. So I was trying to think of ones like this and the one that I did actually come up with was Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder. And this is actually one of my favorite books slash like YA fantasy series. A character called Yelena, who when we first meet her, she is actually in prison and she is going to be sentenced um, to death for the murder of someone. She ends up getting this chance to live by becoming basically the, the general of where she lives, by becoming the general's poison tester. Um, and there is also kind of a master poison tester who is giving her that chance, and he is the one that would have sentenced her to death in first place, so he's kind of like her boss slash savior, and throughout the course of the book, um, as Yelena learns about poisons and starts learning kind of and we start learning more about her story, she does actually kind of become closer and closer to her her boss and you know kind of romance does kind of form a little bit between them and there's obviously those like that situation like there's kind of like a like an unequal dynamic to their relationship because not only like she is technically a prisoner he is technically kind of 
in charge of her um, and also he is also kind of like her boss as well so there's a lot of kind of like red flags there that you have to be careful about and um, but in saying all that I did also I do really love that romance and I do really love that book so number four is there are ten but they're over a hundred years old so I actually have two books for this one and the first one is Persuasion by Jane Austen and um, which no one will be surprised to see me talk about because I literally have been talking about this book um, for the last couple of months ever since I reread it and like kind of re discovered a not only a love for Jane Austen but then like rediscovered a love for persuasion because the first time I read this I definitely just didn't I just didn't connect with a lot of the things in this book um when it came to Anne Elliot and her character and her demeanor and the the kind of the gentle love and longing that is in this book and how beautiful and romantic it is and in terms of Captain Wentworth as well like I always was more like a Darcy person and then when I reread this I realized how lovely he was as a character too and I just really loved the the quiet simplicity in this novel and yeah I just really really loved it and then another classic that I really really love is Dracula by Bram Stoker this is one that I just always have a really fun time reading I love the epistolary like nature of this so this is all told through letters I really love the character of Mina Harker in this as well who is one of the one of the only female characters in this book and it's kind of really really funny reading this book because she is the one that is always speaking the most sense in the room and like none of the men listen to her and there is a little bit of like there is a little kind of annoying thing around that that like literally like she is never listen to even though she's the one always speaking the truth but there's also a funny element to it as well and yeah I just really love the dramatics of this I just loved reading this origin story of Dracula it is so fun um, and it's dark and it's creepy and it's a great one to read at autumn time as well and uh, I always really enjoy reading it. Number five is there are ten but they were studied in school. One of my favourite books that I studied in school was actually Roll of Thunder Hear My Cry by Mildred D. Taylor. I first read this in primary school as kind of like we had for English we had like a book of kind of short little stories or like little like the chapters certain like excerpts of books um that we would read and the first time we, I read it um it was about Cassie being given a book in school but obviously the books that they were given the black school were given we used books that all the white schools had kind of already used and they didn't want any more and the books were treated really like really badly they were ripped they were like scribbled upon and um Cassie it's kind of the one of the few times that Cassie is realising like how she and her family and others are treated um, in their community in comparison to kind of their, their white peers and it was kind of the first time that I myself as a child kind of learned more about racism and what had been going on in the world. I also then had to reread it because we did study it in secondary school then when I think I was 14 or 15. Um, and we read it again and I just really like so I read the whole story and I just really enjoyed it. Cassie is one of my favourite characters um, in literature. I think she's just brilliant. She's really precocious. She is smart and um, she you know she's stubborn. She like really wants to be able to speak up for herself and being able to like kind of going with her with her struggles in you know being a young black girl in a time where it's actually dangerous for her to to be that. I really enjoy the third book uh, which is Road to Memphis where we see Cassie a little bit older and um, she is in her late teens I think by then or early 20s and yeah it was just really great being able to see Cassie older and kind of being the type of young woman that we all know that she would become. I really enjoyed a lot of my reading in school to be honest because I liked to read anyway. And then the last prompt is number six, which is there are ten, but they leave you with emotional damage. And for this one, I have to go with The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, a World War II story. It's quite, it's pretty well known. So if you don't know what it is about, we are following a young girl who is um, kind of, not adopted but she is taken in by this German couple who are looking after her during the war and um, her mother has gone off and it's kind of like implied that maybe her mother was kind of an undesirable in some way and this German couple then kind of uh, take her on to look after her during the war and she becomes really close to this couple and you know they teach her how to read um, and they just look after her really really well and then the whole book is narr is actually narrated by death which is one of the really fun things about the book and we kind of get spoilers about things that are going to happen so often death will actually tell us who in the book will die before it actually happens because obviously he already knows what's going to happen. This book is just it just really pulls on your heartstrings and um, it always leaves me really really emotional. I definitely have cried in public because of this book. About this book that it's there's there's just that like difference and that kind of magic around it because the narrator being death and it was kind of the first time I'd seen this kind of different type of narrator I think being done in a story and being done so well and it just grasps you from the first page and doesn't let you go and it's like tears little pieces out of you 
the whole way through um, because of like all these horrible sad things that are happening and you're just really holding out hope for this little girl and for her, her found family that everyone will be okay and you just know that there's probably a big chance that they might not be. Um, but yeah, there's just so many bits in this book that I really, really loved. There's bits that made me cry and yeah, it definitely kind of emotionally scarred me, but I forgive it for it because I'll reread it again and be emotionally scarred again. That is it for this book tag. I really enjoy this book tag. Um, it is really, really fun to do. So if anyone wants to do it, I tag you. Thank you guys so much for watching as always and I'll see you guys again next time.